Hey, muito bem-vindo, muito bem-vinda a mais uma aula do Inglês 365. Hoje nós estamos num marco super legal, aula de número 110, aqui no nosso desenvolvimento e na nossa construção desse curso que é 100% gratuito, com o intuito de te entregar um ensino de inglês de qualidade. Hoje nós estamos falando sobre ah, o material do módulo 16, que é uma cena onde a Hannah e a Débora estavam conversando no, no podcast sobre a comunicação e nesse trecho ela estava falando sobre comunicação tendo o inglês como segundo idioma. Hoje na aula de listening nós vamos manter a aula 100% em inglês após a introdução. Nós iremos escutar uma vez esse trecho que nós estamos trabalhando. Na sequência nós vamos conversar, vou explicar coisas sobre o que ela falou usando outras palavras, outros termos, tudo em inglês. Sugestão prática já no começo da aula. Escute e repita esse trecho até a próxima aula. Um, let's say three times. So do it three times. Então, três vezes. So let's go. Hello, guys. Well, nós estamos aqui. So now in English, all right? For a minute, 50, 5000. Right Saving that word that way. It's hard, kind of hard to pick it up. I think maybe just the put the accent if there's like a couple words that sound the same together, like mm -hmm. when they're kind of, um, or if you speak faster, I think then it's harder to understand. I can't give like a specific example right now, but I noticed like sometimes just when someone else who's speaking English as a second language speaks faster and then they have an accent, it kind of covers some of the, maybe the words or the, the consonants or the sounds that they're trying to make. So I'm like, oh yeah, I, I kind of know what you're saying, but I don't know what you're saying. Um, so yeah, this going slower helps. All right. And that's the scene we've been working on this module this week. So Anna is American, but she has lived in Germany. So she has experience with second languages. Second language is the language you speak that's not your first. For example, Brazilians, their first language is Portuguese. Uh, Chinese, their first language is Chinese. Americans, their first language is English, and so on and so forth. The second language is your, uh, the second language you learned. Some people have like the third language, fourth language, but it's not very common at all, right? Some people speak one language, some people speak two languages, Some people speak three languages, but only a few people speak like four, five, six languages. So in this episode, Hannah was saying that she said, I think maybe with the accent, there's like a couple words that sound the same together. What she's saying is when somebody has an accent when they don't speak like a native speaker when people have accents for example i have a brazilian accent speaking english and i'm i'm fine with that uh i'm all right i mean it's not a big deal to me uh personally but there is like some details that uh are different from americans or from english speakers like native english speakers and what she's saying is that maybe with the accent with those little details they're different if uh if they're like two or three or a couple of words that sound the same together And then she says, like, when they're kind of, um, or if they speak faster, I think, then it's harder to understand. A good example is 
the word ice cream that we eat. So we eat ice cream, ice, ice cream, ice cream, right? That's what we eat. It's really cold. It's like, it's like frozen thing. Um, very, very good, right? It's very tasty, delicious. So we can say ice cream, but depending on the, the intonation and in, on the rhythm of the sentence, the way we speak, it could sound like I scream, ice cream, ice cream. So it's very, very similar. Uh, some sentences are not as similar, but it could go wrong depending on uh, the person you're, you're talking to. A good example is when I when I went to the supermarket with my friends in the US, I was trying to say peanut butter, like the, the thing we eat, right? And they understood me saying peanut bottle, like this is a bottle, for example. So they didn't understand me. That was a problem. And, and she says, I can't give like a specific example right now. Uh, the example I can give you right now is ice cream and ice cream. And she says, but I've noticed sometimes just when someone else who speaks English as a second language speaks faster and then they have an accent, kind of covers some of the maybe words or the consonants or the sounds that they're trying to make. So what she's saying is when a person that's not a native speaker, it would be somebody from a country that's not uh, the US, England, um, in the other English speaking countries. When somebody that's not from those countries speak faster, it was like we're speaking like this super quickly and I'm in a rush, but I'm not, I'm just speaking very fast. I don't know if you've noticed that, but some people just like to speak extremely fast like if they were always late. And when it happens with an accent, Hannah was saying that it kind of covers some of the maybe words. So it covers some of the words in the middle or some of the things we're trying to say. So it's not good, it doesn't help. If you speak faster, you could actually be making your conversation more difficult. Instead of sounding more natural, you would be sounding less natural. So, some people like to speak fast just to maybe show off like, oh, I can speak fast. Look how fast I can speak. But in reality, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't create any uh, impact on the message itself. It doesn't. It doesn't change the the message. And actually, the contrary. If you speak too fast, it actually makes it more difficult. So. If you're not very confident or if you're not very clear on the way you're speaking certain sentences, you could slow down and focus on getting the, the sounds kind of like worked on, ready before you speak, but you can speak it slower. For me, the great example about this is when you go to the gym, to work out, you have like the weights and you have to work out and stuff. If you do the exercise wrong, you will not help you. 
it's actually the contrary. If you do the wrong exercise, it's actually, it's probably going to damage you in some ways. It's going to get you hurt. Maybe it's going to affect your health negatively. So before making things quickly, we have to make them right. Or before we do something quick, we have to do it right. When, when it comes to an exercise or to speaking uh, the right sounds. So if you, if you wanna develop your pronunciation, instead of speaking fast, speak clear. So just work on the details, if that's something you wanna do. Not everybody have to do it. It's not a must, it's not an obligation. You can have a, 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 like, sounds that are not very clear and still communicate well in English. That's fine. But if you wanted to communicate even better, you can work on the details, the little sounds that will help your message to come across better. Um, and she says, it kind of covers some of the maybe words or the consonants or the sounds that they're trying to make. Um, I'm trying to remember an example that happened to me with something just like that. Uh, it stinks, it stinks. This is not the example that happened to me, but I'm going to give you an example just, that just uh, popped up in my mind. The word stink means like to smell bad. It's a bad smell. And sink, sink is when a ship is on the ocean and then it sinks. So here's the ocean, here's the boat, and then it sinks, right? And if you say it stinks or it sinks, depending on the way you speak, you will cover the sound on stinks to sinks. So if you say it sinks, it sinks, it's like you're not saying it stinks or it sinks. So the details are important when it comes to communication. All right, it's not the most important thing. It's not fundamentally important. Don't get me wrong, but the, the more confidence and the, the clearer is your message, the better it is for the other people and also for yourself. And then she, she goes on saying, um, kind of covers some of the words, the consonants, uh, the sounds that they were trying to make. So I'm like, mm, I kind of know what you're saying, but I don't know what you're saying. Uh, so going slower helps. And that is a absolutely great piece of advice. You don't have to speak fast, but you have to speak your message in a way that it is understandable, in a way that other people will get what you're saying. It's more important actually than having the speedy message, all right? And that's the message that Hannah shared with us uh, on this episode. And that's our listening class with this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any suggestions? Also, it will be really nice to get your feedback on it. Thank you so much. Take care. And I'll see you on the next one where we will continue working with this topic. Bye-bye.